Soccer is considered the world's most popular and influential sport and the second most played sport on the planet after swimming. With all that this entails, and in tops we bring you the 10 best players who have gone through the history of the beautiful game, in which we will take into account the importance given to the player by the official bodies of the sport as well as his career, track record, influence, consistency, individual performance and talent of the player. Before we start, it is very important for us that you subscribe to the channel and that you like the video so you don't miss the content that we will be releasing every week. So make yourself comfortable and enjoy the video. Thank you very much. Number 10. Ronaldinho Gaucho. The Smile of Soccer. Ronaldinho is a former Brazilian footballer who played as a midfielder or striker. He is recognized worldwide as one of the greatest talents in the history of the sport. Ronaldinho Gaucho is not only a soccer player, he is the idol of millions of fans who see in him the incarnation of the Brazilian Jogo Benito, the soccer made with art that excites young and old. The story of this soccer star began on March 21, 1980, when Ronaldo de Assis Moreira was born in the Brazilian town of Porto Alegre. In the heart of a family of humble origins in which the love for this sport is lived with enthusiasm. It was his father Joao who instilled in him a love of soccer, as he did in his older brother Roberto. It was the latter who seemed predestined to become a number one with the ball, but when Ronaldo was still just a child he demonstrated his skills and Roberto retired from professional practice to become the manager of a future international figure. Fans consider him a true artist on the ball whose speed and skill allow him to succeed in his natural position as a midfielder. Ronaldinho's professional career began in 1997 when he started playing for his hometown club, Grêmio de Porto Alegre. In addition, that same year he became world champion and top scorer with Brazil's U-17 national team. It is the starting shot of a career full of successes. For four years Ronaldinho plays for the Porto Alegre club and evolves as a footballer. Apart from obtaining excellent results with his team, he triumphs with the Brazilian national team in the 1999 Copa America. In the year 2000 Ronaldinho was signed by Paris Saint-Germain of France for 5 million euros and in 2002 he was called by Luis Felipe Scolari to represent Brazil in the World Cup in Korea and Japan where he formed a dream team. Along with figures such as Ronaldo Nazario, Rivaldo, Cafu and Roberto Carlos, where they were crowned five-time world champions. Upon his return to Paris and after several problems with the club, the president of FC Barcelona Joan Laporta decided to send an offer for Ronaldinho as a revulsive to the failed signing of David Beckham who had gone to Real Madrid. After days of negotiation Ronaldinho was presented on July 19, 2003 at the Barcelona Stadium in front of an audience that had not seen glory in a long time. He was named, without discussion, World Player of the Year in 2004. On November 28, 2005, he received the Ballon d'Or, the most precious object for Barcelona's Brazilian, who remembered all his teammates and confessed that the award encourages him to continue working to enter the history of soccer. The following season he would lift the Spanish League and the Champions League. Ronaldinho's talent in the following years was fading due to his indiscipline and night outings and with the arrival of Pep Guardiola his cycle at Barcelona was over, a club where he won two leagues, two Super Cups and a Champions League. Ronaldinho played for clubs such as Milan of Italy, Flamingo, Atletico Monero, Querétaro of Mexico and Fluminense where he won the Copa Libertadores in 2013. Finally, Ronaldinho retired from soccer in 2018 being one of the eight players who have won the FIFA World Cup, the UEFA Champions League and the Ballon d'Or. Ronaldinho's talent was captured in the memory of all soccer fans, being one of the most beloved players and one of the greatest dribblers of all time. Number 9. Ronaldo Nazario. The Phenomenon. Y lo hace ante Ronaldo, atención a Ronaldo que encara la defensa valencianista ante cuatro hombres y el gol de Ronaldo. Ronaldo is considered by various organizations, personalities and media linked to the sport as the best center forward in the history of soccer as well as one of the best and most prolific strikers. In his sporting prime, he stood out for his speed, dribbling and definition, facts for which he stands out and is considered the second best Brazilian player in history and enjoys great popularity among fans around the world. 
Ronaldo began his career at Cruzeiro, where he won the Brazilian Cup, the Monero Championship and scored 44 goals in 47 games. He then moved to PSV in 1994 becoming the most expensive signing in the history of Brazil at that time where he was declared top scorer of the Dutch League and Dutch Cup champion. In the Netherlands he would score 54 goals in 57 games and dish out 20 assists to his teammates. Ronaldo was an unrestricted natural talent. His game was a mixture of power and speed, almost impossible for opposing defenders to stop. He did whatever he wanted with the ball. On an individual level, Ronaldo won the trophy for top scorer. Two seasons were enough to make him one of the most sought-after players in world soccer and, after declaring his rebellion, Barcelona paid 2.5 billion pesetas for his services. At the age of 20, he looked set to make his mark at Barcelona. In his first season in Spain, under the orders of Bobby Robson, he won the European Cup Winners' Cup, the Copa del Rey and the Spanish Super Cup with Barca, and delighted the fans with unlikely goals, such as the one he scored in Compostela or at the Camp Nou against Valencia. He finished the season with 47 goals in 49 games. However, serious disagreements between the board of directors and his representatives made him sign for Inter Milan after completing a dream year. The Italian team paid the $29 million dollar cancellation clause to the surprise of the fans who, after winning all the Ballon d'Or, Golden Shoe, and FIFA World Player trophies, could not understand how they let him go. With the world completely at his feet, Ronaldo stood up with Brazil in the final of the 1998 World Cup in France. A final that seemed predestined for him, but which ended with a major heart problem. Brazil lost that day 3-0 to the France of the magician Zidane. In November 1999, he suffered his first knee injury against Lecce. In April 2000, his second. In the first match he played after recovering, Ronaldo completely ruptured the tendon in the same knee. That day, in the Coppa Italia final between Inter Milan and Lazio, the Olimpico was silenced by the Brazilian star's cries of pain. The 2002 World Cup in Korea and Japan saw Ronaldo's resurgence. Despite his inactivity, Scolari trusted him and decided to include him in the final squad for the World Cup. The Brazilian did not disappoint and led the team to the final. He was the top scorer of the tournament with eight goals and scored in the final against Germany the two goals that gave Brazil the Penta Championship. Ronaldo had returned to the international stage and it was at that moment that Florentino Perez took notice of him. He was not the explosive striker of his best seasons, but he was still as quick and lethal, and his second golden ball was in his hands after his magnificent performances. In September 2002, after lengthy negotiations, Real Madrid snatched Ronaldo from Inter Milan for 36 million euros. The Champions League and La Liga were not enough and Ronaldo finally left Real Madrid almost through the back door in the winter market of the 2006-2007 season. Milan and Corinthians tried to rekindle what was left inside him, but in 2011 he gave up. I can't take it anymore. I wanted to continue, but I can't do it. I think of a move, but I can't execute it the way I want to. Time is up. It's been nice to play professional soccer, said the best center forward in history in tears. Number 8. Zinedine Zidane. The French magician. Little moment in the evening still with Zidane. It is! It is! In the nick of time for France. Zinedine Zidane will always be remembered as one of the most elegant footballers in history. His exquisite technical quality delighted fans of Juventus, Real Madrid, and the French national team. And although he reached his peak in terms of honors before the 21st century by winning the 1998 World Cup and the Ballon d'Or, it was from 2000 onwards that the Marseille-born footballer exploded as a player. But it was not only in the history of France that his performance on the field was immortalized, but the whole world admired and rejoiced with his good soccer. Because basically Zidane or Zizou, as he has been nicknamed, was a player who treated the ball with great quality and love, and the public, both his own and others, thanked him for it.
placing him in a privileged position that made him one of the most remarkable soccer players of the 90s. He made his debut in the French club Can Football of the city of Cannes in 1989. After that, he was signed by another French first division club, Football Club de Girondins de Bordeaux, and in 1996 Italian soccer set its eyes on him, being signed by Juventus for a millionaire. With Juve, he would win three international titles, including the European Super Cup in 1996. The year 1998 was transcendental for Zizou as he became world champion and was proclaimed best player in the world according to FIFA and France Football Magazine. The French came as top candidates to win the Euro 2000 held in Belgium and the Netherlands. They defeated Italy with a golden goal and extra time in the final, crowning France as European champions and achieving the national team double with Zidane as the star player. The new millennium found him changing teams, this time to Spanish soccer, to one of the biggest teams, Real Madrid. And this time a millionaire record was broken because Madrid paid him no more and no less than 78 million euros for his transfer. He was the brains, the driving force of a team formed by illustrious players such as Luis Figo, David Beckham and Ronaldo Nazario. The team perhaps did not live up to the real expectations generated, but it left great moments to remember. The main one has Zizou as the protagonist. A magical volley, with a ball falling from the sky, gave Real Madrid its eighth European Cup at Hampton Park against Bayern Leverkusen. His stay in Madrid lasted five seasons and the 2006 World Cup was his last participation as a footballer, in which he arrived at the age of 34, reaching the final of that competition despite his national team not being favored to qualify for the tournament. In the final against Italy, he scored a penalty goal after seven minutes, putting France ahead. However, 12 minutes later Italy got the equalizer through Marco Materazzi to stay that way throughout the game. During extra time, five minutes into the second overtime, after some insults with Materazzi, Zidane headbutted the Italian player in the chest, which earned him a red card from Argentine referee Horacio Elizondo, who had not seen what had happened at the time, but decreed his dismissal after being informed by the fourth official. This action became one of the most memorable in the history of soccer. Extra time continued with a 1-1 to -one draw, and the winner was decided in a penalty shootout, in which France was defeated. At the end of the final, Zidane was announced as the golden ball of the championship, however, after being sent off, he did not return to the field to collect his award or his runner-up medal. In the saddest way ended the career of the man who is considered the best French footballer in history, but the soccer world does not forget the great moments of a magician on the pitch, who is remembered as the classiest player that soccer has ever seen. Number 7. Franz Beckenbauer Nicknamed the Kaiser, he is recognized as one of the greatest footballers of all time, winning two Ballon d'Ors, being the first defender to achieve this feat and the greatest in the position of defense and in the history of his country. Beckenbauer was a versatile player. Although he stood out as a midfielder, he adapted to different positions on the field and is considered as the great exponent of the free defender position, unknown until his time. As a player and with the Bayern Munich shirt, he won a European Cup Winners Cup in the 1966-1967 season, three European Cups in 1974, 1975 and 1976 and an Intercontinental Cup that same year, while at the national level he won four Bundesliga and four German Cups. He was the first player to win three European Cups as captain of his club. He is one of only three men, along with Brazil's Mario Zagallo and France's Didier Deschamps, to have won the World Cup as both player and coach, lifting the World Cup trophy as captain in 1974 and repeating the feat as coach in 1990. He was awarded the European Ballon d'Or in 1972 and 1976. He ranks third in the ranking of the best footballer of the 20th century published by the AIFS in 2004 and second in the ranking of the best European footballer of the 20th century in 2004. In 2007 he was named by the IFFHS as a universal genius of world soccer. With his national team he was a real top player in the competitions he played in as he was runner-up in the 66 World Cup, third place in the 70 World Cup, champion in the 72 European Championship, Champion in the 74 World Cup and runner-up in the 76 European Championship. 
In total, he scored 94 goals in more than 700 games in his career and is remembered as the best German player in the history of soccer. Number 6. Alfredo Di Stefano Inteligencia y finura le ayudan a integrarse sin ninguna dificultad en aquella delantera mágica. Tras un corner que saca copa, el balón va a Stefano que marca entre dos defensas a media altura. Es el segundo. Legendary player of the club's River Plate, Milanarios, and Real Madrid club de football, from 2000 until his death, he was honorary president of Real Madrid, to which as a player he owes his greatest successes, world recognition, and to which he became its all-time top scorer. He is considered one of the best players of all time and, together with Cristiano Ronaldo, Real Madrid's greatest legends. As a player, he was capped by two countries, a circumstance allowed at the time, playing six matches with the Argentine national team and 31 with the Spanish national team after adopting his nationality in 1956. Despite this, he never played in the World Cup, the most prestigious tournament at national team level, for different reasons which has not prevented him from being considered one of the best players in the history of soccer and as the first great of this sport. His greatest achievement with a national team was the 1947 South American Championship, currently known as Copa America. Considered by FIFA, the highest soccer organization, as one of the four best soccer players of the 20th century along with Brazil's Pelé, Argentina's Diego Maradona and the Netherlands' Johan Cruyff, in 2004, he was elected the fourth best player of the 20th century by the International Federation of Football History and Statistics, as well as the best Spanish player of the 20th century. He was also included by the same organization among the 48 legends of soccer, in addition to being awarded by France Football Magazine as the best of all Ballon d'Or winners until 1989 a circumstance for which he received the Super Ballon d'Or, being the only footballer in history to possess it. At the time of his retirement, he was the top scorer in the history of Real Madrid, where he played 11 seasons, followed by his teammates Ferenc Puskas, 65 goals behind, both members of Di Stefano's Madrid, which UEFA considered one of the best teams in history. His name is directly linked to that of the Madrid club, since it is not in vain that his signing for the Marengue team changed the course of the team's history until it was proclaimed the best club of the 20th century. Thanks above all to the five consecutive European Cup finals won by the club during his time in Madrid. Di Stefano also stood out for his exquisite technical quality and his versatility on the field, being considered by experts, ex-football players and fans as the most complete player that soccer has ever produced worldwide. Alfredo scored a total of 480 goals in his career in more than 660 professional matches. As the first world-class player of fame, he influenced such greats of the sport as Pelé, Johan Cruyff, and Bobby Charlton, all of whom recognized that Alfredo had been the best player they had ever seen. Alfredo Di Stefano retired in 1966 at the age of 39 and passed away on July 7, 2014, leaving an indelible mark on the greatest club in the world, where for many he is the best and greatest player to ever wear the club's jersey. Number 5. Johan Cruyff. Johan Cruyff was a Dutch soccer player and coach. He is considered the best player in Europe in the 20th century and the second best player of the 20th century, behind Pelé, for many soccer lovers is one of the most influential people in the history of soccer as a player and as a coach. He was the best footballer of his time. Fans, specialists and colleagues agree that Cruyff was one of the best players in history. His titles and awards attest to this. But those who had the chance to see him play not only highlight him for the trophies he won, but also for the way he played soccer, a different kind of soccer in the eyes of fans who emphasize his dribbling, speed, endurance and grit when he entered the field of play. Maximum legend of Amsterdam Ajax of the Netherlands and one of the greatest players to wear the Barcelona jersey. Johan Cruyff won three golden balls, the 1-1 in 1971, when he played for Ajax, and the two consecutive ones won in 1973 and 1974, already as a player of FC Barcelona. He was crowned with his national team in the 1974 World Cup in Germany where, despite not winning the title, his play and that of his teammate amazed the soccer world. He won three Champions League titles as a player during his time with Ajax and one as a coach in 1992. 
Cruyff is one of the few success stories as a player and coach. First at Ajax when he retired in 1984, two Dutch Cups and one European Cup Winners' Cup, and then at Barcelona, one Copa del Rey, four Spanish Leagues, three Spanish Super Cups, one European Cup Winners' Cup, one European Cup and one European Super Cup. But, not only for his titles as a coach is Johan so important, his way of making his players play and his ideology marked a before and after in history, where these remain in soccer as we know it today and where the teams that follow his discipline are acclaimed by fans and connoisseurs of good soccer. All coaches talk about movement, about running a lot. I say it's not necessary to run so much. Soccer is a game you play with your brain. You have to be in the right place, at the right time, not too early and not too late. My strikers only have to run 15 meters, unless they are stupid or sleeping. The great Johan retired as a coach in 1996, where 20 years later and due to an addiction he had turned into a habit, the golden tulip passed away at his home in Barcelona at the early age of 68. But the soccer world not only remembers him as a great player or a great coach, but every weekend in the Premier League or in Barcelona's matches, they have only one person as a precursor. The great Johan Cruyff. Number 4. Diego Maradona. Diego Armando Maradona was an Argentine soccer player and coach. As a player, he played as an attacking midfielder or forward and is recognized by numerous specialists, footballers and international personalities as one of the best footballers in history. Diego Maradona won a total of 12 titles during his career, five of them with Napoli, where he lived his golden age. Diego Armando Maradona went down in Italian history after leading a team like Napoli to two Italian league titles and competing head-to-head -head with the Giants of the North, such as Milan, Inter, and Juventus. In Naples, the Argentinian is considered a god. Diego wore the jersey of six teams throughout his successful career, debuting with Argentino Juniors at just 16 years of age where five years later the biggest club in Argentina would sign him and where he left very good performances and incredible goals such as the one he scored against River at the Bombonera. His spectacular numbers in his first season aroused the interest of FC Barcelona where he scored 38 goals and distributed 24 assists in only 58 games. Surprisingly, when he was giving so much as a Azulgrana, he was transferred to Napoli after being suspended for three months after assaulting Miguel Angel Sola in a match against the Athletic Club. The story of Diego Maradona and Napoli is a love story at first sight. A meeting that was to change the destiny of the player and the city. A never-ending passion that goes on and on for the rest of his days. Napoli was seen as a small and poor club from the south of Italy, but with Maradona everything would start to change. The Argentine star arrived from Barcelona for almost $8 million. And Napoli, in addition to fighting among the best, began to win. They won the 1987 and 1990 Scudettos, the first in the club's history, plus the 1986-1987 Coppa Italia, the 1988-1989 UEFA Cup the first international tournament in the 1990 Super Cup. Maradona became God. That idolatry went beyond soccer, with the 10, Napoli put itself at the level of the powerful of the Italian North, that North that always despised the humble workers of the South. So much love for Maradona made that, in the 1990 World Cup, when Argentina faced Italy in the semifinals at the San Paolo, today Diego Armando Maradona Stadium, some Neapolitans cheered for the blue and white team. Diego was more than just soccer, he raised the Napoli flag high and thus divided a country. Diego Maradona was consecrated as one of the greatest in the 1986 Mexico World Cup, where for many it is the best performance and individual presence of a soccer player in the history of the World Cup. No one has been able to match the level that Diego showed in that tournament, where after being the leader that tipped the Alba Celeste to the final, he provided the assist to Buruchaga for the winning goal. 
It was a victory that marked a before and after in the history of the Argentine national team in the World Cups. For years later, in the World Cup of Italy 90, the idol of the national team played the whole World Cup without a fingernail and with his left ankle like a ball. Argentina would lose against Germany and the following year Diego would leave Napoli after his doping problems. From that moment on, Diego's career would fall into an abyss due to his addiction and in 1994 he starred in one of the saddest and most painful moments for a player. Finally, on October 25, 1997, Diego Armando Maradona said goodbye to his career as a soccer player in the Argentine Superclasico at the age of 37, leaving us with a speech that caused thousands of people present that day to cry. El fútbol es el deporte más lindo y más sano del mundo. Eso no le quepa la menor duda a nadie. Porque se equivoque uno, no, no, no tiene que pagar el fútbol. Yo me equivoqué y pagué. Pero la pelota no, la pelota no se mancha. Diego scored 311 goals and assisted more than 170 times to his teammates. On November 25th, 2020, Diego Armando Maradona passed away at his home in Argentina. News that paralyzed Argentina and shook the world of soccer where as a tribute the Napoli club renamed the San Paolo Stadium to Diego Armando Maradona Stadium, a memorable act to a player who left an indelible mark in the hearts of soccer lovers and who many remember as the best player of all time. Number 3. Pele the king of soccer. Edson Arantz do Nascimento is considered by many soccer players, official organizations, press and fans around the world as the best and greatest soccer player of the 20th century. He was a Brazilian player who changed the way of seeing soccer and amazed millions of people with his talent during his time as the king of soccer, but the so-called Black Pearl was not only a person who kicked a ball to the Thousand Wonders, but he was also a social icon about overcoming and changed through sport. His success was forged through ambition, talent and a smile that marked generations and all those kids who dreamed of making a living from the beautiful game where he was the greatest of the greats. His humble origins forged a hard-working personality, fighter and with a terrible eagerness to achieve the desires that perhaps his father, Don Denho, could not achieve. The boy who wanted to be a pilot when he was very young began to take an interest in soccer as soon as he could remember, but it was Futsal and a coach named Waldemar de Brito who would polish him before he became a legend. After his apprenticeship process, the illusionist of the ball got his doctorate in soccer too early and Santos quickly saw his potential. With the Albanegros, he would become a six-time Serie A champion, four-time champion of the Rio Sao Paulo tournament, two-time champion of the Copa Libertadores, and two-time champion of the Intercontinental Cup, scoring 643 goals in 18 years with the club. But his greatest achievement was to have won the three World Cups in 58, 62, and 70 for his national team, where his most outstanding performance in the World Cup of Sweden 58 and with only 17 years of age, he was nicknamed the king in his match against France. More than 28 titles and countless individual awards are some of the most important milestones of the soccer monarch. Santos, New York Cosmos and Brazil are the three outfits that Pelé wore during his career. He spent 18 seasons in Brazil, two years in the American League and 19 in the Canarinha jersey. He made his debut in Santos in 1956 and hung up his boots with the Peaks 10 jersey in October 1974. There he won everything and became the team's emblem, even touring Europe, America and Africa so that the whole world could see and admire one of the best footballers of all time. The Brazilian footballer hung up his wand and hat in 1977 after a fleeting spell with the New York Cosmos. The gift he left behind as a footballer and human being was so great that he continued to win titles after leaving soccer. In 1994, he was chosen in the historical team of the FIFA World Cup. For years later, he was included in the world team of the 20th century and a year later, he was named the best player of the 20th century according to the IFFHS. His trophy cabinet did not stop filling up there and in 2000 he received the FIFA Player of the Century trophy and in 2002 he also appeared in the FIFA World Cup Dream Team. In addition, he also won the FIFA Order of Merit in 2004 and the Honorary Ballon d'Or in 2014 after signing a historic career. 
In 2020, he was also recognized in the Ballon d'Or's Historic 11, in addition to being a Golden Foot legend. A life full of merits and recognitions. Pelé was a juggler. The Brazilian was one of the most complete and brilliant footballers in living memory thanks to his technical and physical qualities, dependent on an extraordinary intelligence with and without the ball. His resources were inexhaustible and he had the ability to accelerate with the ball and stop on a ball to throw defenders off the ball. El Rey was not an ordinary striker. His best qualities were to be found in the three-quarter line when he drove the ball, since in that area of the field the opposing saga jumps to the attacker and it was there where Pelé unbalanced and broke lines with astonishing ease. His talent for inventing dribbles or impossible passes was unpredictable and that threw the opposing team off balance and generated confusion. Walls, mental speed, short dribbling and change of pace are some of the greatest fantasies of a midfielder who was capable of striking from any point on the field. In addition, that pause and acceleration he achieved in his dribbles left defenders pinned and the ability to cushion any delivery with his chest or both feet generated a goal-scoring opportunity. The King left the world at 82 years of age on December 29, 2022, where his influence on the beautiful game will remain immortalized in the hearts of all fans of this beautiful sport. Number 2. Cristiano Ronaldo dos Santos Aveiro Le va a pegar el capitán, se adelanta Ronaldo. Often considered the best and most complete footballer, as well as the top scorer of all time, and one of the best in history according to official bodies and fans, both for his talent, scoring ability, leadership and discipline, Cristiano Ronaldo is considered the most influential and one of the most successful footballers in history. Absolute legend of Real Madrid, of which he is the all-time top scorer and second best assistant and of the Portuguese national team. He is for millions of fans the best player in the history of Real Madrid and the greatest player to wear the jerseys of Sporting, Manchester United, Juventus and Al Nasser. Statistically speaking, he is the absolute king of the most important club competition in the world, where he is the top scorer and top assisting player. Cristiano is not only credited with being an excellent athlete but also one or the most mediatic footballer in history, becoming the main face of sports for the American brand Nike. Being a role model for millions of young people and children around the world and the most followed person in social networks above any public figure. Throughout his professional career, he has managed to break several records. Among them, he is the first player to win four Golden Boots, the first player to win the Puskas Award, the second most Ballon d'Or winners with five, the first player to win the Best FIFA Award and the most successful with two. Together with Robert Lewandowski and Lionel Messi, and the player who has won the UEFA award for the best player in Europe the most times, with three titles. Ronaldo began his career with Sporting Club de Portugal, where he won the Portuguese Super Cup before signing for Manchester United in 2003 at the age of 18, where he established himself as an elite footballer after winning three Premier Leagues, two EFL Cups, one FA Cup, two Community Shields, one Champions League and one Club World Cup. He was awarded the Ballon d'Or, the FIFA World Player of the Year and the Golden Shoe, trophies that accredited him as the best footballer in the world. After starring in the most expensive transfer in the history of soccer at the time, he joined Real Madrid Club de Football, where he improved as a footballer reaching his highest records in play, goals, team titles and individual achievements. No one in the club's history has scored as many goals as the Portuguese striker, whose record at Real Madrid is impressive. For Champions League, three Club World Cups, three European Super Cups, two Spanish League titles, two Spanish Cups and two Spanish Super Cups. During his time in Spain, he starred in the biggest rivalry between two footballers alongside Lionel Messi. In his career as an international of the Portugal national team he has two titles in his trophy cabinet, Euro 2016 and UEFA Nations League in 2019 and is the top scorer with 123 in 200 games, so he is also credited with the record of the player with the most games for his national team. Undoubtedly Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the most important players in the history of the beautiful game, for many the best player of all time, for others a step below world champion footballers, however, despite not getting the most important title, Cristiano Ronaldo's career does not compare to any other. 
Being a true globetrotter and a winner in all the clubs where he played, where his discipline and winning mentality make him loved by millions of people all over the planet Earth and a true giant of this sport. Number 1. Lionel Messi. The best player in history. Considered by most fans, journalists, former soccer players and official bodies as the most complete player and the best soccer player ever seen, Lionel Messi has become the most successful player in the history of the world's most important sport. He is the only player in history to have won, among other distinctions, the Ballon d'Or eight times, eight FIFA World Player of the Year awards, six Golden Boots and two World Cup Golden Balls. A prolific goal scorer, he holds, among others, the records for most goals in a season, in the same club and in a calendar year. He is also the all-time top scorer for Barcelona and the Argentine national team, the top scorer in La Liga, the Spanish Super Cup, the European Super Cup and the non-European player with the most goals in the UEFA Champions League. Born and raised in the city of Rosario, at the age of 13 he moved to Spain, where Barcelona agreed to pay for the treatment of the hormonal disease he had been diagnosed with as a child. After a rapid progression through Barcelona's youth academy, he made his official debut with the first team in October 2004, at the age of 17. Despite being injury-prone early in his career, by 2006 he had established himself as a key player for the club. His first uninterrupted campaign was the 2008-2009 season, in which Barcelona achieved the first treble in Spanish soccer. Because of his small, left-handed dribbling style of play, he was soon compared to his compatriot Diego Maradona who, in 2007, declared him his successor. Lionel Messi won his first Ballon d'Or at the age of 22 and consecutively from 2009 to 2012 became the first player to win four consecutive Ballon d'Ors. Considering that today's soccer is much more professionalized and competitive than when any of those stars of yesterday were playing, it is much more difficult than before to be as dominant as Messi has been, winning eight times the great award. The Argentine star is the player who has managed to win the Golden Boot more times than any other player, winning the award six times and claiming the title of Europe's most prolific scorer. He is followed by Cristiano Ronaldo with four, and ten other players have won the award twice. Messi has won a total of 43 official titles during his career, 35 with FC Barcelona, 3 with PSG, 1 with Inter Miami, 3 with the Argentine national team, 1 with the Argentine U20 team and another with the U23 team. He is the player with the most titles in history, along with Danny Alves, the Argentine is positioned as the favorite to surpass him in the coming seasons. His career with the Argentine national team was always a never-ending rift, since before winning the Copa America in 2021, he was accused of disappearing with his national team in some important tournament. So much so that at the end of the 2016 Copa America Centenario after missing the penalty in the final of that tournament and because of so much pressure and criticism from the Argentine press he decided to retire from his national team. But the affection of his people and the love of his country for his figure made him change his mind and with the arrival of Lionel Scaloni to the technical direction would come the two most important titles he could conquer with his national team. The 2021 Copa America winning the final against Brazil and the 2022 Qatar World Cup in a memorable match against France, being the best player of both tournaments. With the conquest of the World Cup, for many the debate between Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo ended and the fight to be the best footballer in history was won by Lionel Messi. Undoubtedly the greatest player of all time statistically, collectively and individually. The shy boy who arrived in Barcelona with a growth problem became the greatest legend this sport has ever seen. Without further ado, we want to thank you for watching the complete video dedicated to the greatest and most important legends of the favorite sport of millions of people in the world. There is no doubt that their influence and talent will live on for the rest of history and their legacy will be immortal. Subscribe to the channel to stay tuned to the content that we will be releasing every week. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.